So this is another one of my crowd-pleasing, this types of motorcycles sucks video. And I know this causes a lot of comments from people telling me I don't know what I'm talking about, but you best start cracking your knuckles now and prepare your rage fingers, because I'm about to spend the next few minutes explaining to you in exhaustive detail exactly why Indian motorcycles suck. Yup, the discount Harley that actually does make better motorcycles in HD sucks, but not only that, they're worse than Harley Davidson. Now I know that's a bold claim seeing as how half a sentence back I said that they make better motorcycles, but Indian as a brand has a lot of issues that I think people often overlook because of their perceived underdog status in the cruiser market. The reality is that Indian just doesn't have the clout to compete with something like Harley Davidson, and because of how recognizable HD is, is, they have to step twice as far and twice as fast to take them on. But that's not why you're here, right? You're here to listen to me make fun of cruisers for 10 minutes so that you have some ammunition for your next bike night when the cruiser guy shows up and asks why your 600 is so slow. But little do you know, my dude, your 600 is slow. Can it even do 186 miles an hour on the highway? Yeah, I thought not. Now if your motorcycle's paltry 150 mile an hour top speed is leaving you stuck with the tab at bike night, that means you're going to be pulling out your wallet a whole bunch. And you don't want to add insult to injury by pulling out some crummy old canvas trifold. The whole group's already clowning on the fact that you're not actually fast. You don't want to give them something else to make fun of. Get yourself a Ridge wallet and save yourself the pain of embarrassment. Am I peer pressuring you into buying one? Well, no, not really. I'm just saying that all of your friends are doing it, and you probably should too, right? I just recently picked up a second one with my own money so that I could add it to the rotation. I picked up that burnt titanium, and I gotta say, it looks super sharp. It looks as pretty as our R1's link pipe, which is saying a lot. The wallet has RFID blocking technology, room for your cards and cash, and is practically indestructible. They've got a whole bunch of other EDC goodies for the squidlet on the go, too. Click that link down below and use the code YAMMYNOOB for 10% off your order and free shipping. Look at that, we're saving you money on the last wallet you're ever gonna buy. Aren't we nice? Just click that link already. Now on to the reasons why Indian sucks. Let's start out with number seven, selection. Indian just doesn't have that many bikes. They've got four scouts, one is 60 cubic inches, or 1000 cc's, and the others are 1200s. Then they have three FTRs, which have slightly different farkles, but no significant differences. So for small displacement cruisers, and yeah, 1200 is a small displacement bike in America, there's decent options from Indian. But if you want a cruiser style motorcycle, one that is a solid everyday ride and commuting motorcycle, you better like the vintage because that's all you're gonna get. Yes, there's the vintage Dark Horse, which is all blacked out in some emo edgelord fringe attempt at looking cool, and it comes with no accommodations for passengers. So you lose the windshield, you lose the passenger seat, you lose the chrome, but you keep the old school American cruiser looks and basically rattle can the whole thing black, and it only costs a thousand dollars cheaper and called it another model. So you got two Indians in the everyday middle displacement cruiser category. How many does Harley have? Eleven. Now, admittedly, not every single one of those is a knockout, but they're all cheaper than the Indians, and you got a ton of options in styling. But okay, maybe you want some big bikes. Well, they have three in the bagger category compared to Harley's five. Also, Indian does this dumb thing where the Challenger is the big main flagship cruiser, and it has the 106 in it, which is the smallest big bike engine they make. I could go on and on here, but Indian just lacks the variety you get with Harley, where you can basically get whatever you want. Reason number Number six why Indian sucks is price. Indian makes some st stupidly expensive cruisers. Let's take the Harley Street Glide, the fanciest version of the fixed fairing cruisers without a top box, and compare it to the Challenger Limited from Indian. I saw a bunch of people tell me how I needed to put the Challenger on my list of American cruisers to own, and here it is, it's big moment in the sun, but unfortunately that yellow glow is coming from the puddle it's standing in. The Challenger starts at $27,999, with a 1768cc engine putting down a claimed 128 foot-pounds of torque, which means in the real world it's closer to 115 to 120. It weighs 840 pounds, and while it does have a 6-axis IMU and Brembos, if you're riding this bike in a way that needs that, you are an absolute madman. It's honestly just shiny parts for the bike's own sake, because you're going to be scraping those pegs way before any of that stuff matters. Now the Harley, well, it's got a 114 cubic inch, or 168 cc engine, which puts down a tested 123 foot-pounds of torque at a lower RPM. 
It is a bit heavier at 853 pounds, but it's also cheaper at almost $27,000. Well, yeah, about $1,000 doesn't seem like much out the door, but it is enough to buy yourself your fancy slip-on exhausts right there. Also, the dash in the Harley is just much nicer. On the Challenger, you get your iPad, two gauges, and speakers, but on the Harley, you get your iPad, four gauges, and better speakers. And while this might be subjective, the look and feel of the Harley is a bit more premium than the Indian. So long story short, you get more more with less money from Harley. Man alive, is that a weird thing to say? Number five, Indian is a poser. They might claim they want to move to Seattle and listen to weird grunge rock, but Indian is just as white bread as the rest of the Japanese cruisers. They talk a big game about heritage and proudly brand since 1901 on their motorcycles, but the truth is that Indian died in 1953. They started out making the single, building engines in Illinois, and they started racing back in 1905 with itty bitty little V-twins, and some maniac named Erwin Cannonball Baker rode the Indian from San Diego to New York in 11 days, 16 hours, and 10 minutes, setting some record in 1914. They developed the Scout and Chief models for World War I and World War II, but they discontinued the Chief in 1950, and the CEO left Indian for Texas Instruments. And the new CEO, John Brockhouse, basically said, nah, we're not gonna do motorcycles no more. Yes, the company has been passed down from Brockhouse to AMC to AMA, but it wasn't really until 2011 when Polaris bought Indian Motor motorcycle company that they started to get their corporate acts together. So are you wrong when you say that Indian is America's oldest motorcycle manufacturer? No, not technically, but you might neglect to mention that they took a solid 50-year hiatus. Meanwhile, Harley did have the troubled AMF years, but even though they were owned by a different company, they were still making Harley-Davidson motorcycles. Hell, the Davidson brothers even started making single-cylinder motorized bicycles in their backyard shed in Milwaukee, a more American tale there never was. Who cares if they got their start three years after Indian? Reason number four, no one sells a motorcycle like Harley-Davidson. For those of you who've never purchased a Harley-Davidson at a dealership, let me walk you through this magical experience. You take a big tour of the dealership where you'll be spending many thousands of dollars in the service department, you get a little tin filled with Harley-Davidson owner's group pins and patches, and then as you walk by the parts counter, the parts guy hands you a book that's thicker than a religious tome, except with higher production values because it's in full color with two-page centerfolds of bikes that just look awesome. Then you walk out front with all this crap in hand and you see your showroom shiny motorcycle sitting there ready for you to ride off. I have had several buying experiences at other dealerships, including Indian dealerships, and not one of them is as unique as buying a Harley Davidson. It's always talk to the sales guy, play hardball, talk to the manager, sign the paperwork, shake hands, and then leave. When you buy a Harley, it's like a freaking party is thrown in your honor. It's probably because they're desperate to sell motorcycles, but that's besides the point. When you walk out of the dealership, you feel like you joined an exclusive club, because you did. The Harley's owner group is an actual worldwide riders club with benefits and discounts and merch and all kinds of stuff. With an Indian, you don't even get a t-shirt. I mean, I took my MSF at a Harley dealer and they gave me a free t-shirt, let alone the two bikes I bought from them new. I am up to my eyeballs in Harley swag right now. Number three, aftermarket support. Indians just don't have nearly the wide assortment of aftermarket parts that Harley does. It's possible to buy a Sportster frame and then build an entire motorcycle out of aftermarket parts. Baker 6 transmissions, Hammer Performance jugs, Olin suspension, Vance and Heinz pipes, Arlen Ness air cleaner, Joker machines, pegs, and Burley brand handlebars, and then to top it off with a Saddleman seat. If you can dream it up for a Sportster, you can do it. But that's also true for the Dyna models. Anything you want for a Harley Davidson, including turbo kit, you can buy on the wonderful internets. Not only that, but Harley's parts catalog is extremely robust, including performance parts, all the way out to stage four, covered by a factory warranty. By comparison, Indian's aftermarket is pretty limited, and their performance parts stop at stage three and only apply to the Thunderstroke engine, so no power scout for you. Number two, dealer networks. There are just less Indian dealerships than Harley dealerships. Now why does that matter, Spite? I bought my motorcycle from the dealership, and I take it there every 6,000 
thousand miles for service. Well, let me set a scene for you. You're out on a ride in Central Texas and you're between Austin and Green. It's a beautiful autumn day and you're cruising down one of your favorite roads. When you get to the end of it, your buddy pulls up next to you and say, hey, you're leaking coolant. You look down and sure enough, your rear tire's just soaked in coolant from the overflow tank. If you're on an Indian, you're SOL because you're 50 miles in either direction from the nearest dealership. But if you're on a Harley like I was when that happened to me, you pull into the local Harley dealer five minutes away and get your bike fixed up. Now I know what you might say. Well, well, my Indian just doesn't break down because it's not a Harley. But trust me, it will. Every bike breaks down eventually, and if you're on an Indian, you better hope you're in a big city. Basically, any motorcycle mechanic can work on a Harley, too. Hell, you can probably just hit the engine with a hammer and it'll start up again. But that Indian? you might need to call in the flatbed. Number one, and this one is purely subjective, and I understand that, which is why I put it at the end of the video, Indians just don't look as good as Harleys. If you pull up next to a vivid black Harley, it doesn't matter what model, everyone's gonna know exactly what bike you're on. If you roll up on your dark horse bike from Indian, some dude's gonna walk out and say, hey, nice Harley, bro. The Challenger's front fairing looks like some cheap aftermarket piece for the street glide. The vintage looks like a discount heritage, and the Springfield is the road king you have at home. Like it or not, Harley set the standard for what modern cruisers look like, and everyone's been trying to copy or iterate on that, and they're worse for it. Sure, your bike may be more modern than a Harley, it might be lighter or a bit faster, but it's not a Harley, and deep down, you really just wish you bought a Harley. Oh, didn't see you there. Why don't you watch this video right over here while you're at it, because this one's over actually, there's nothing left to see, but if you click this one right here, you could keep watching your sweet Papa Yam, on video, here, on the internet, on YouTube. Click the video, do it.